It's Jenny from Koi 68 and this is Koi 68 exclusive with our very special guest. This is Jenny Nguyen, your host today. And please welcome our very special guest I'm inviting for you today to be the talk of the show. It's Rainer from Soy Foundation. Thanks Jenny. I'm so happy to be here today. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Okay, so um, in the meeting, in the like a talk show today, I'm gonna go through some questions from my end, and there will be like some pop up question during our talk. So I want to be a very kind of um, friendly mood in our conversation today to not take it too seriously okay. or like too formal to be, you know, adapt with our audience. Sounds good. We'll keep it light and chill. Okay, um, whenever you're ready. Okay. You ready? I am ready. <laughs> okay, so good. Um, can you please tell us a little bit more about yourself to everyone to know? Sure. So my name is Rainier. I'm the head of growth marketing at the Sweet Foundation. I've been in crypto since about 2015, 2016. So I've been in it for a while, but I didn't start putting my career in it professionally until I joined Chainlink Labs in 2021. I was there for a little under a year, and then I had the opportunity to join the Sweet Foundation. I was one of the first early marketing hires on the team there. We have since grown the team enormously over the past year and it's been a wild ride and I'm just super happy to be here. That's great. Um, sounds like you started crypto pretty early, but back then are you just a freestyle or freelancer trader or you just like doing another full-time job and you just not full-time in crypto in around 2016, 2017? That's correct. I did not start put my career into crypto until 2021. Prior to that, I was more of a degen where oh. I would just trade. Well, I, I didn't trade Bitcoin or Ethereum, those I hodled, but I would trade some of the other altcoins okay. just for fun. And obviously we had a couple of cycles that went through there. So it's been a lot of fun. But in 2021, that's when I knew that from a professional standpoint, I wanted to put my entire career into crypto just because I saw the potential of the industry, I saw where the technology could take us and I really wanted to participate in a deeper way than just being an investor. Oh, that's very special because uh, back then everyone just know about Bitcoin or Ethereum, but you do your research on another things. And then you started your journey in Sweet Foundation around 2021, right? Sweet Foundation um, last year. Last I, year, I started so at Chainlink Labs the company behind the Chainlink token in 2021. Okay. And I was there, I'm sorry, I actually started there in 2022. Okay. And I was there for about a year. And then I joined Sweet Foundation in March of last year, 2023. Until now. So why do you choose Sweet Foundation? What's special about it? Oh, well, Sweet Foundation, Sweet the blockchain, in my opinion, is really going to revolutionize the space in the sense that the chain SWE is built on top of a move link on top of the move languages, which was very different than mm -hmm. Solidity and Rust. The founders of SWE were actually from Mistin Labs, which is a spin out of the Libra project from Facebook. If you guys remember, there was Facebook a number of years ago had a project where yeah. they were looking then, to build a chain. Yeah. And because of the regulatory environment in the US, they decided not to continue forward with that project. But the folks working on that project in Facebook said, we have developed a really amazing technology. Why not continue to apply it in a different way? So they spun out of that. The founders, the five co-founders of Mistin Labs, who are the original contributors to the SWE blockchain, formed the company and then developed SWE and then we launched Mainnet of last year. That's awesome. So it's a very inspiring story of what you know, what you joining and you know about the background of the co-founders and also what inspired you to join the project itself as well. Uh, not like not alike to some people, they join just for the FOMO. Like mm -hmm. for example, they see that oh, this project is a trend right now, so I join for just like just for money or for not the like, you know professional career path. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and that, like other from that, what do you think about Sway Foundation? Because um, Sway Foundation, when it comes to layer two project, it's um, like pretty new. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to acquiring the users, it's also a very important thing. So what do you think about the strategy that Sway Foundation have done so far to acquire more users to join Sway? 
Well, for SWE, we are not so much focused on, at the SWE Foundation, we're not so much focused on the end user. Really, when we think about SWE as a blockchain, we are a layer one and we are the infrastructure layer. So really our aspiration is to be able to enable builders to create amazing experiences. Now, when you think about the challenges of Web3 and how it compares to Web2, really the end user today doesn't think Web2 is broken. They love Web2 apps. They love Instagram. People love TikTok. People love Facebook. They love WhatsApp. So in the end user's mind, Web2 isn't really broken. And when they get introduced to Web3 and Web3 apps, it's actually quite complicated, quite convoluted, and very difficult for them to understand how to navigate and successfully use those apps. So for us, if we start with the premise that we really want to enable the onboarding of the next billion people into Web3, we have to be able to make Web3 experiences competitive with Web2 experiences that already exist today. How do we do that? We start with the builders. And what we need to do is we need to be able to equip the builders with the right infrastructure, with the right tools, with the right technology, so that they can build the apps for Web3 that compete with Web2. And we have a thesis that if you enable the builders to great, build really great experiences, they will be able to great, create great experiences that will attract the users. Now, obviously, you need to help kickstart that ecosystem to a bit. So the SWE Foundation has channels, we have marketing, we have networks that we can then also empower the builders with that they can tap into as they go along in their journey and they start building their apps. So talking about building builders, acquiring users um, from Web2, etc. I just checked the TVL of SAFE uh, today. It's around $600 million. Oh, wow. That's so good. And um, for the projects, how about for the projects when you're approaching the builders, build on say, what will be the strategy for that apart from users? Um, for example, when I ex when I research other foundations, other uh, blockchains, um, infrastructures, they do some campaigns they, and they also have some grants mm -hmm. for the builders and to encourage them to build more DFs and explore more on um, their, their infrastructure. How about you guys? Yeah. Yeah, there's a number of things that we want to be able to do to enable builders to come to SWE and to be successful on SWE. First and foremost, it's providing them with the right tech stack. Move, the language that SWE is built on top of, is fundamentally different than any other smart contract programming language that has existed before it. It is object-based, not asset-based, and I'm not going to get too into the weeds of the technology or the technicalities of it, but what it makes for is a really great developer experience. So first and foremost, our DevEx, our developer experience is par to none. It's really great. Secondarily, you also need to help builders with funding. Obviously, builders, if you're a one-man shop, maybe you can bootstrap it, but most builders are not. They need to have a team. They right. need to be able to build that team up, and you need to be able to pay that team. So we have grants. To date, I believe we have issued over $1.7 million in grants across the entire ecosystem, and we're looking to do more. We're also shifting our grant process just a little bit Historically, when a lot of foundations have grants programs, they say, give me any idea and we will tell you if we want to fund your idea or not, which can work, but it's sometimes hard to find the diamonds in the rough because then you are inundated with literally hundreds, if not thousands of applications and very small foundation teams have to then go and sift through all these applications. One of the things that we're experimenting with is we're shifting our model to an RFP. What, which is, sorry, what is RFP? RFP stands for Request for Proposals. Mm -hmm. So what we are now experimenting with is this idea that there's a lot of great ideas generated across the SWE ecosystem, whether it's internally or externally, ideas for apps or ideas for products. And so what we have done is we've said, hey, we've identified four, five, six, maybe a dozen great ideas, and we want to put those ideas forth to builders out there to see if the builders want to submit a proposal to actually build that idea and bring it to life. So how how do we can engage with that? Do you have a do you guys have a kind of a form or what would be step by step for because I know that 
a lot of audience uh, watching here. Uh, they're not only retail users, but they all also come from a projects that already built on Sui, or maybe want to apply a grant on Sui, or maybe want to um, explore to build on Sui. So what will be the step-by-step -step to approaching that you're talking about? Sure. So with regard to grants specifically, you could go to our website, sui.io, and we have all the information there about our grants programs. We have grants programs for builders, but we also have grant program for academics. So if you're an academic or a researcher and you want to uh, put forth and do work in the cryptography field or anything related to blockchain space, you can also apply for a grant there. Now with regard to getting started building on Sui, there's a number of ways to get involved. If you're not already part of the community, you should join the community. Get a sense for what the community is like, get a feel for it. Make sure that it's actually something that you want to be a part of. Of course, I'm biased and I think the sweet community is great and awesome, but you all have to make the decision for yourself whether or not you believe it as well. And so the way you can get involved is you can join our Telegram group. We have a private Telegram group specifically for builders. It's called Swinami Riders. You can apply to join. Someone will approve you if you are a builder. We try to keep the group tight because we want to avoid noise. Okay. As you know, there's a lot of noise out there and we, we want to be able to separate the signal from the noise. So we have a group there. Get involved in our Telegram. You can also follow us on Twitter to just get a sense of what the community is like. You can join our Discord. And when you're ready to start building and you want to take it to the next step, you can reach out to someone on our developer relations team. For, some, for those of you that are located in Vietnam, we have a local DevRel resource located in the country. His name is Daniel and he'd be happy to help. Awesome. So is there any um, requirements specifically or limitations for that? For example, is college students or like in some in stu uh, students in the university, they do research, they do some like um, diploma like related to that. Do they limit it to the age? For example, you have to be above 18 or something like that is there, there is no age limit i believe okay. there are specific conditions depending on the grant program that you're applying for so my best advice would be to check out our website for okay. all the details yeah. on that but what i want to say is generally we are open so i don't want people to think like oh because of this or that i don't qualify i would say Check out our website, learn all the details and take it from there. Yeah, because the, the reason why I'm asking this question is because uh, in those two months ago, I have an, an experiment to talking to the students from universities around um, Ho Chi Minh City mm -hmm. when they study especially about technology and about um, engineering and when they do, they want to do something related to blockchain to be their uh, graduation thesis or like their, just their research at school. So they want to apply for something like that and they want to look for something like that. So that's why I'm asking if there is any limitation to the students. Um, yeah. yeah they, they should absolutely apply. Yeah, I know right? that we have given grants to students before on the education side, but let's say some of these students are actually builders, they're programmers, they're developers, and they have an idea for an app, mm -hmm. they can also get involved in that way. And, and another alternative is to join one of our hackathons, and that's actually right. one of the best ways to get involved with starting to build on Sui. As we have these hackathons unfold, we host a lot of workshops where folks can learn about the different offerings and the different features that Sui has on its blockchain so they can become familiar with it. And what we do is we do it in a step-by-step -step manner so that as you engage throughout the hackathon, ultimately, when all is said and done, you have a product or an MVP of a product that you're able to share and compete for a price pool. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, can you, maybe we, would, we can attack the link or the information about the hackathons is happening and all the information that you mentioned in the description box or in the comment chat so everyone will um, follow the information below, okay? Absolutely. We have an, actually, we have a hackathon that's coming up. It's called Sui Overflow. It is our Sui first Overflow. global hackathon okay. and it'll be available to everyone and it's actually launching very that's soon. That's awesome. That's awesome. So talking a little bit about education, because we also mentioned about school and stuff. Do you think education is important? Because out there, everybody knows more about Rust or Solidity. Everybody's familiar with those languages, but uh, some of them doesn't too familiar and know how to do with move. Mm -hmm. So do you think education is important 
Of course. For yeah, developers to learn a new language like me. Education is super important, and depending on your own learning styles, there's different ways that you can get educated. Some folks engage with other developers, and they like to engage with them directly to ask them questions about Move, to understand the different nuances of building on Move. We're also building up our library and repertoire of educational workshops and videos. We're also working very hard on our docs to make our docs as clear as possible, and to make sure that we always have great documentation as we unleash and release new features because. We're always doing new research. We're always creating new products that are native to Swiss platform. So we're always working to make sure that all of our documentation is in line, so that our builders know exactly how to take advantage of the amazing technology that we have. That's awesome. So you basically, you guys have already have everything. And people just need to find it and to explore about it because everything is on the table. You know, we're still young, so we don't quite have probably as much as out there as <laughs> on solidity. But we're working very quickly to get up to yeah, speed. Okay. And um, I would like to say that our team is working very hard to make sure that we have all the documentation and all the things that we need in place. That's great. Um, so, what do you think about uh, Vietnam market, for example? Because uh, Vietnam, everybody know that is super. Potential for mm -hmm. blockchain and for crypto because we have all you know in the top one and top three ranking in the crypto adoptions and in uh, Bitcoin owners following like the research from channelizers and finders. So, what do you think about the potential of the Vietnam market, especially comes to the users or the developers and to explore uh, more of say foundation in Vietnam? Yeah, well, I think Vietnam, personally for me, is a really important strategic country for us. This is actually my first time here in Vietnam in Ho Chi Minh Your City. Your first time? My first time, and oh, I love I didn't it. Know that. I love I love Vietnamese food. I'm from San Francisco Bay Area, and my wife and I eat a lot of Vietnamese food every week. But it has no comparison to the Vietnamese food <laughs> here right. locally. Of course, it's so good, and I think it's a beautiful country. The places that I've seen thus far and the people that I met are are very nice, and I want to come back here a lot. And I will say for Vietnam. Vietnam for us on the foundation perspective is very important. Now, APAC for us as a region is very important, and Vietnam is one of the top, most strategic, important countries within the region. And for us, what we want to be able to do is to attack it on a number of levels. First, we want to be able to equip the builders to make the experience better for them. One of the challenges that I've heard. Is that for Vietnam builders, the builders are very good in terms of developing great apps, but from a marketing perspective, they have trouble or challenges reaching a right. global audience. So that's a challenge that we at the Sui Foundation want to be able to help address. We want to be able to help all of our builders, whether they're in Vietnam, Turkey, China, U.S. We want them to be able to reach the global audience. Sometimes it's easier to start local and go global, but ultimately for projects to succeed, they want to have the worldwide success. They need to be able to attract the global audience. And that's what Sui can provide to them. Absolutely. That's awesome. One of the things that we want to be able to do is we want to be able to have more activations and events in country. Mm -hmm. And as you guys have probably seen, we're starting to do more of that. We're also going to have a great presence at GM Vietnam, which is a a conference that y'all are hosting, and so we're very happy to be a part of it. And we want to be able to show the builders that one, it's humans behind the Sweet Foundation. We're people, just like all of our builders are. Second, that we want to be able to help. Putting a face to a name shows that we're human and we're here to actually help and help them be successful. And then third, to be able to demonstrate our presence in a way that people feel confident. That the builders feel confident. If I'm on another chain, I feel confident coming to Sui and knowing that the Sui Foundation will support me. Right. So if anyone wants to connect like directly or in person with Sui Foundation, they can look for Daniel. Right. You have a Vietnamese base here. Yes. Please bombard Daniel with all of your <laughs> inquiries and questions. Daniel awesome. will be able to help. Awesome. Okay. So I want to ask uh, questions about what uh, the very latest news of Sui. Of Mist and Lab, actually, if you guys have uh, follow, you guys will see that they just launched um, Soy Play Zero X One, right? That's right. So I'm I'm very curious. I'm just wondering, uh, Solana they have Saga Phone, uh, Aptos they have Jumbo Phone. Mm -hmm. So why uh, Soy Foundation? You choose another way. It's Soy Play Zero X One, not maybe Soy Phone. Soy Phone. Yeah, but another. Uh, approach. Well, you know, there's a lot of great phones that already exist out there. People love their Androids, they love their Samsungs, they love their uh, Google Plays. And for us, one of the verticals and one of the 
things, one of the industries that we feel our technology is really applicable for is for gaming. If you look at uh, historically Web3 gaming, it has not been in line with what traditional gaming is about. Traditional gaming is about making great experiences and playing great games. But Web3 games of the past have been more about this play to earn. I'm right. only playing because there's some financial incentive for me to spend my time doing the thing that I'm doing. And we really want to break away from that. We want to get back to the roots of what gaming is truly about, which is about building great games and having fun doing that. And for us, with the mobile gaming console, we feel like this is a great opportunity because it will marry the best of what Web2 games offer. We'll be able to play native Web2 games on there. You'll be able to also play Web3 games on there. And it is going to be integrated with the SWE blockchain through our partner, Playtron. That's awesome. So yeah, actually, when the news comes up, I'm, I, I uh, export the picture and showing around when I, my office over here because we have a lot of gamers here. And you know, they are so love it and they very formal about, about the design and about everything. And I intentionally want to tell you that can you bring one here for everyone to experience? But in fact, it will be launched around 2025, right? I believe it yeah. is slated to launch in 2025. We did announce it at Sui Base Camp the chief product officer of Mistin Labs, Adani Abiodun, is the one who released it. I was actually sitting in the audience because I wanted to hear the reaction and the reaction in the crowd was phenomenal. Yeah. People were going crazy. It was Love actually it. way more hype and people were having way more FOMO than I even thought would happen, but it was great. It was great to see the trailer for it. They actually had one of the test devices, one of the early alpha stages of the devices on stage that they kind of showed and showcased at the event. So it was really wonderful to see yeah, that. Yeah, Vietnam, it's a like gamers hub. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe, do believe, and I pretty confidently believe that Vietnam is so formal about that. And we look forward to what is coming next for Soi Play, uh, Soi Play 0x1 and also upcoming Plane of Soi Foundations as well. And I think uh, that's go through all of my questions that I want to ask um, one of the marketing head of Soi Foundation right here, Rainer. So before um, ending this video, can you share a little bit more about the upcoming future plans of Soi Foundation to the audience or you want to say something to the audience before we end this video? Sure. Well, I do want to say that I love it here in Vietnam. We're going to have a lot more activations and events coming up here. So check us out, sweet.io forward slash events if you want to see all of our upcoming events, whether it's Vietnam worldwide. Get in touch with us. Follow us on social media at Sui Network on X. Uh, get in touch with us over email. Subscribe to our newsletter. Just get involved with the community and follow along because we have a lot of great developments, a lot of exciting stuff that's going to happen throughout the rest of 2024. That's awesome. Looking forward to that. And thank you so much for being here. Uh, being hope uh, being in Vietnam the very first time has impressed you and you met a great people in Vietnam for this you know, business trip of you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jenny. Thank you guys also for watching this video. Hope you like it. Please do not forget to subscribe and give a comment down below and I'll see you in the next episode of Core 6 j And this is Jenny. This is Rainy from Soy Foundation. Thank you so much and goodbye.